Welcome back everyone. This will be my video for Yoda's lightsaber and how Luke Skywalker got it, where it came from, because there were a lot of questions after the Book of Boba Fett episode 6 that sort of conflict with what we thought was pre-existing canon. The story for what happened to Yoda's lightsaber just changed, so I'll explain what that is. If you're brand new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to get all the videos. Jon Favreau and Dave Filoni are introducing a whole bunch of new canon with The Mandalorian, The Book of Boba Fett series, all the live action series that take place during this era. Careful for spoilers for The Book of Boba Fett if you have not been watching the episodes yet. But during The Book of Boba Fett episode 6, Luke Skywalker is training Grogu at his new Jedi temple. He intended for Grogu to become his first new student at the Jedi Academy that he was creating. And as a way to test his commitment to the traditional Jedi path that Luke wants him to follow, he offers him Yoda's lightsaber. And it's meant to be this holy crap fan servicey type of moment to bookend an entire episode full of Yoda Empire Strikes Back Easter eggs. All of their training scenes and the whole storyline is meant to be a parallel for Luke's Jedi training and his time with Yoda on Dagobah. So when he whipped out Yoda's lightsaber at the end of the episode and everybody freaked out, a lot of longtime fans were confused because Luke having Yoda's lightsaber conflicted with some other canonical material that claimed Yoda's lightsaber was destroyed after Revenge of the Sith. So what actually happened to Yoda's lightsaber is a complicated timeline issue that has a relatively simple answer. And it all starts with the way Dave Filoni invoked so much Yoda in the episode itself. So Dave Filoni wrote and directed the episode. So Dave Filoni is the person who chose to use Yoda's lightsaber in this story. Dave Filoni made Yoda the character very important to the story of the episode. Even though we don't actually see Yoda on screen himself, he's a very important character to the story. So the fact that there's so much Yoda in the episode is one of the main reasons why it's Yoda's lightsaber that he whips out at the end of the episode instead of another special lightsaber that's super fan servicey. Luke had been spending all those scenes of them training together, speaking to Grogu about Yoda, telling him stories about training with Yoda, about his funny backwards way of speaking that made it sound like he spoke in riddles. For those of you asking if all of Yoda's species talk like that, they don't. Yoda was the only one. We never heard Yaddle speak in any of the movies or the TV shows, mostly because after Phantom Menace, she never appeared in any of the movies or TV shows. That was because George Lucas kind of backtracked changing his mind about the way he was using Yaddle, wanting to make Yoda feel more unique. And if suddenly you see a bunch of Yoda's species on screen together, Yoda himself starts to feel less mysterious and it takes some of the power of the character away. And if you've never read any of the stories about George Lucas creating the Yoda character, Yoda was sort of like his most precious creation in all of Star Wars. He was always very protective of Star Wars, but mostly of the way they use the Yoda character. He didn't want the other Lucasfilm people that were writing the expanded material to over explain Yoda, wanting to keep him as mysterious as possible. That's why until Grogu showed up, you never saw any other of Yoda's species besides Yaddle. For those of you also asking what happened to Yaddle, there are some non-canonical stories about what happened to her after Phantom Menace, but until they confirm she's dead in the live action series or movies, you can assume that she's still alive out there somewhere. Unless a character is confirmed dead verbally by another character on screen in a movie or a TV show, or you see a body, the general rule of thumb is that they're still alive canonically. That's why there are so many fan theories about Mace Windu still being alive out there, because we never saw his body after he fell out of the window. I know you're all in my corner on this. We know Jedi's can fall from incredible heights and survive. So apparently, I am not dead. And for those of you that want to theorize that Yaddle was Grogu's mother, I don't think that she was, but it is a fun theory to think that Yoda was yaddling Yaddle behind the scenes of the Jedi Temple and the DL for hundreds of years. Even though in this episode of the Book of Boba Fett, they have this whole thing about Jedi attachments and wanting to keep Grogu from getting too attached to the Mandalorian. They did make special allowances for certain Jedi who were from races in danger of becoming extinct from having children. So Yoda and the Jedi Council, for instance, did allow some Jedi to get married. But the story for what happened to Yoda's lightsaber before the Book of Boba Fett Episode 6 aired was a little bit different. The original canon story was that Yoda lost it on Coruscant when he was fighting Emperor Palpatine. You can see it fall in the Senate chamber here. Then we see Yoda falling, escape through the tubes, and being rescued by Bail Organa as they escape off-world. And we never see the lightsaber again during Revenge of the Sith. They never reference it in any of the future materials until we got to the Marvel Darth Vader comic book in 2017, which was supposed to be canon. The Lucasfilm story group told us it was supposed to be canon. Like the story picks up right as Anakin Skywalker gets his Darth Vader Sith armor, comes off the table, starts flipping out when Palpatine is lying to him about what happened to Padme and his children, and his loyalists going around Coruscant in the aftermath trying to destroy all the remaining Jedi artifacts left at the temple, and there's a scene of them collecting a bunch of Jedi lightsabers and throwing them into an incinerator. 
Masameda himself holds up what appears to be Yoda's lightsaber and toss it into the pile as they light it up, the kyber crystals all exploding. While this is happening, Palpatine is instructing Darth Vader in how to create his new red Sith lightsaber that we see in the movies, saying that he has to take a regular kyber crystal from a Jedi and corrupt it. You can't just go out and find a red kyber crystal. Sith crystals have to be taken, not given or found. And as he's giving them all these instructions and they're watching these lightsabers be incinerated, he mentions Yoda's lightsaber as Masameda is throwing the one that looks like Yoda's on the pile. So they want you to think that Palpatine's forces had found Yoda's lightsaber in the Senate chamber after their fight and they were destroying it now. So it's heavily implied they destroyed it but never outright confirmed. That's why after seeing this, fans just assumed Yoda's lightsaber was destroyed and that's why we never saw it again after Revenge of the Sith in any of the Star Wars Rebels episodes, the Bad Batch episodes, or any of the new movies later in the timeline. So that's why a lot of longtime fans were so surprised when Luke whipped it out at the end of the Book of Boba Fett episode 6, looking none the worse for wear. Like, where did this come from? How did he get it? It's not meant to be a copy. This is meant to be Yoda's original lightsaber. He never had multiple lightsabers. So now this brand new story for Yoda's lightsaber in the episode supersedes the comic book story. The way it works in the Star Wars universe is that the live action stuff, the movies, the live action TV shows are always meant to be the most official canon amongst all things that are canon. There's like a tier list. It always starts with the live action stuff. This happened when the prequel movies came out too. There was a bunch of pre-existing story that they developed in the expanded universe about the history of the Jedi and what happened to certain side characters or characters from antiquity that the prequels kind of trampled on. But because it's George Lucas making new movies, the new movies were the official canon. So if there's anything in a new TV show, new movie that contradicts something from a book or like a comic book, the new live action stuff is the official canon, just replaces what the pre-existing story was. Right now, Dave Filoni, Jon Favreau are kind of like the top tier stewards of the Star Wars canon during this era the Mandalorian takes place during, so their story is the new official canon. Dave Filoni, like I said, wrote and directed this episode, so he's the person that wanted Luke Skywalker to whip out Yoda's lightsaber. And there's actually one of the complete location books published by Lucasfilm after Force Awakens came out that helps fill in some of the gaps with what happened to Yoda's lightsaber after Revenge of the Sith. The new official canon story, until something else comes out in the future along to retcon it again, is that Yoda lost his lightsaber fighting Emperor Palpatine like we all saw in Revenge of the Sith, then off screen, while he was in the process of escaping, he recovered the lightsaber, took it with him when he went to Dagobah, and just kept it in this wooden box in his hut. So the wooden box that's sitting here next to Luke Skywalker, where he got the lightsaber from, that was the box that Yoda kept it in. And Yoda just chose to never use it again while he was on Dagobah, mostly because he didn't need it. Then after he died and became a force ghost, Luke Skywalker faced Darth Vader and together they seemingly killed Emperor Palpatine, even though Darth Vader was the one that threw him down the shaft. After all the dust of the Battle of Endor settles, Luke Skywalker begins the process of reviving the Jedi Order, creating his new Jedi Temple, the Academy. At some point, he went back to Dagobah to collect all the Jedi artifacts that Yoda had kept in his hut. And that's when he got this box with Yoda's lightsaber in it. During that part of the timeline, between Return of the Jedi and The Mandalorian Season 2 Episode 8, Luke had been traveling all over the galaxy looking for Jedi artifacts and Force-sensitive students to train. That's one of the reasons why it was Luke Skywalker to show up in The Mandalorian Season 2 finale to help them. He felt Grogu's beacon in the Force because he'd very specifically been listening for beacons like that. But they've never referenced Yoda's lightsaber in any of the new movies, so anything that Dave Filoni and Jon Favreau do with Yoda's lightsaber in present day of the Mandalorian and Boba Fett episodes is totally new canon. Luke is making Grogu choose between it and the Mandalorian armor, and even though they've clearly foreshadowed Grogu will return to the Mandalorian, and that would mean that he'd have to choose the armor over Yoda's lightsaber per Luke's instructions here, yes it is possible that there's a twist and Luke still lets Grogu take the lightsaber with him. I'd really like to see him construct a totally different lightsaber eventually. But talk about more easter eggs for the classic trilogy. Luke Skywalker used his father, Anakin Skywalker's original blue lightsaber, for a long time before he created his own green lightsaber. So it's always possible that Grogu gets to use Yoda's green lightsaber for a while before he eventually creates his own totally different one. He's gonna live for like 900 plus years, so he's got plenty of time to make his own new lightsaber. They also probably want to sell a bunch of toys with Grogu wielding Yoda's lightsaber. Just you wait, there will be a toy for this that you can buy. Let me know in the comments though, if Grogu leaves Luke Skywalker in the Jedi Academy, do you think that Luke will still let him have Yoda's lightsaber? My full Book of Boba Fett Episode 7 finale video will post next week just like normal, then I'll start doing some more Mandalorian Season 3 videos. 
Everyone click here for that new Luke Skywalker Grogu video and click here for my full Book of Boba Fett episode 6 video. Thank you so much for watching. Everyone stay safe and this is the way.